Hello, I'm Ross, I work at Rive, and today I'm going to be using Rive's Layouts feature to create a component that can be resized, and when it is resized, the elements within the layout dynamically reposition so that the component looks perfect whether or not the size is portrait or landscape. Let me show you how. First things first, let's create our elements. I'm going to have a header, make it bold, big and bold. Call this header, and I will duplicate it and move it down, reorder, and call this main text. I will change the main text to uh, just regular, decrease the size, and then I'm going to go into the main text text run and paste in some lorem ipsum. I'm going to adjust the text box size so we can see the text. Then I'm going to quickly rustle up a little button make this white, change the corner to round, create a triangle, rotate it, change the color to black, create a stroke, change the stroke to a round cap and a round corner, increase the stroke size and decrease the size of the triangle, move it into position and then create some more text. I'll just say play. And I'll make that bold as well. Excellent. I'm going to put my text, my triangle and my rectangle into a group with command G. And I'll call this group button group. And I'll put the button group at the bottom. And now I'm going to drag in my background image just from the outside. And in my assets panel, I'm going to right click and generate artboard. This is important. We need our image to be on a separate artboard to our layouts artboard. So firstly, let's highlight the header, main text and button group, shift L. Because the elements were vaguely on top of each other, Rive automatically decided to turn it into a column instead of a row. As you can see over here, we have an automatic gap between our elements of seven pixels. However, I am noticing that there is a gap in the text box, and I'm pretty sure that I have to change this just in the actual text settings. Yes, at the moment, the text box has a fixed size. We don't want this. We want an auto height. Now I'm going to highlight column and I'll call this content. And I'm going to turn off absolute position so that I can change the fit to fill the artboard width and fill the artboard height. And it's from here, our parent artboard, that we can adjust the padding on the outside of the elements. And like I said before, the gap in between the elements. It is the parent that affects the children. Now, I want this play button to be in the bottom left corner. However, as you can see, it is obviously not. Uh, how do we do this? How do we push the play button down? Well, all we need to do is create an empty layout and put it in between this text and this button. Uh, the quickest way to get an empty layout in this case well, would be to just uh, duplicate the button layout. I'll just call this button. We now have two buttons, obviously. Uh, but I'm just going to delete the button from this layout. So now we have an empty layout. I'm going to call this gap. And I'm going to change the height of this empty layout to fill. So it's constantly filling the leftover height of its parent layout, which in turn pushes any elements below it down. So now I can change the shape of my artboard and that empty gap is always filling the space. Now for portrait, I actually want the header and this text to be next to each other. And obviously right now they are part of this column. How do I turn them into a row? Well, just highlight both of them, shift L. This will automatically turn them into a column because they were on top of each other. However, we can change this column into a row. I'll call this text row. And I can go over here and just change the column into a row. And then I can add a gap between the elements. As you can see, this box is going outside the bounds of our padding. How do we keep it within the bounds? Well, just highlight text row and change it from hugging the width of its children to filling the width of its parent. And as you can see, this has affected the size of the text row, but the text within is still overflowing. 
what can we do? We can just change the width to fill its parent, which is the text row. Now let's add our background image. How do we do this? Well, first of all, we have it as an artboard. So let's just nest that artboard. And then we can drag our nested artboard into our layout. For now, I'll just pop it at the bottom. And as you can see, it is automatically being used as a background. Let's highlight it and see why. At the moment, its mode is set to node. And there's not really that much control. I would, you know, I would like it to be centered. I'd like it to resize when I resize the artboard. How do I change it to that? Well, I can change the mode to something called leaf. And the leaf mode has a bunch of different settings. I like that it's being aligned to the center. However, the fit is currently set to fill. And as you can see, fill in this case is stretching the image. I don't want that. So highlight picture again, and let's try some other fits. So instead of fill, let's try contain and see what that does. Okay, so, okay. So it's constantly containing the image within the bounds of the artboard. Okay, that's fine. But I don't want that because obviously it's got gaps. Let's try something else. Cover. Okay, I think this might be it. Yes, it's constantly covering the contents of the artboard, no matter what shape the artboard is. And of course, it's going out of bounds of the artboard, but that's okay because we can just highlight our content layout and go up here to clip the contents of our layout. This would be a good time to include a corner radius for our content layout. And now if I highlight the artboard, I can resize and the background image resizes correctly. I'm currently designing for portrait. However, I want the face to be nudged over to the center when we are in portrait. I like this position when we're in landscape, but I'd like it to be pushed to the right for portrait. How do I do this? Well, just highlight picture and change the align position X to something like 0 0.5 uh, minus 0 0.5. Okay, that's cool. What this means is that when we are square, the picture is correctly positioned 100%. When we're in landscape, the picture is correctly positioned. However, if we go into portrait, the picture zooms into an offset position, which is pretty nice. Now, as I've said before, I'm designing this component to work in portrait, like it is right now, and landscape. However, I want it to look a little bit different in landscape. Uh, for instance, I want the play button to be on the right corner in landscape, and I want this text to be in a column in landscape. How do I do this? Well, if I just change it to landscape, let's work out how we put the play button over here. Uh, I can highlight content, and I can see that all of content's children are being aligned to the top left. What happens if I change it to the bottom right? The play button has moved across and everything else stays where it is because the text row is filling the width of the artboard and when something is filling the width of the artboard it cannot move left or right even if you change its alignment. And the next thing I want to change is to change this row into a column. Let's see what that looks like if I do that. Okay, I actually want the main text box to sort of fit over here. I wonder if I can change the size like that. Yep. Okay, so this will be something that we animate in the state machine. Let's do that now. Undo. And I'm going to change this back to my portrait settings, which was the text row is a row. And I want to change the alignment back so that the button is on the left. Okay, let's open up the state machine and create a timeline called portrait. And we're going to keyframe the properties that are going to change between portrait and landscape. The first one, as I just changed, is this. I want the elements within content to be aligned to the top left. And like I changed before, I want this set to a row so we can keyframe that. And I think that's it. So let's duplicate portrait and call it landscape. Now I want to resize the artboard, but I don't want to create a keyframe for that. So let's go back into design mode, tab, highlight the artboard, and we're going to change it to landscape. Let's open 
our timeline again. And now we can change these properties for our landscape timeline. So content, I want it aligned to the bottom right. That pushes our play button over. For the text, I want it as a column. And I want to add another keyframe to shrink this text down so it's just contained within this space. So highlight the text and we're going to change it to a fixed width and set a keyframe for that width. And since we've set keyframes for this property in this timeline, we should also set keyframes for these properties in the other timeline as well. So open portrait and set keyframes for the default, which is fill and one fill ratio. Now I can open my state machine, delete this transition, and now I'm going to hook up portrait and landscape to my any state. And I'm going to set the condition that the artboard ratio needs to be less than one to go to portrait. And to go to landscape, the artboard ratio needs to be more than one. This just basically means, is it wider than it is tall or is it taller than it is wide? So if we press play, the elements are laid out exactly how we want. We can highlight the artboard itself and to test things out, we can increase the size and decrease the width and things automatically adjust their position. Pretty cool. Before I export this file, let me just highlight the artboard itself and I want to delete the background fill and then go up here and export your dot riv. Then you can open up Framer and go to Plugins and search for Rive. I've already used it, so I just tap here, drag and drop your dot riv here, and then go into Player, check on Rive Renderer, and then change the fit to Layout. This enables you to use Rive's layout features within Framer. So now if I wanted to use this file as, let's say, like a header at the top of my website, I could do that. But if I change the size of this layer, watch the elements closely and you'll see that they change position just like we set them up to do in the state machine. So that's how to set up one Rive file that you can use in multiple ways. Thank <laughs> you.